Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 50 of the Frisky Whiskey. Today, we are joined by the Bar Book. How are you guys doing? <laughs> good, man. How are you? Good, good, good. I know we went through the introductions a little bit, but here we go again. So, uh, I guess the first topic, right, is what are y'all drinking today? Um, I started drinking um, Bullet Rye earlier in the day. Because right. I sound like a frog. So, you know, I'm going to do the old fashioned recipe. Let's do Heck some whiskey yeah. and some lemon and some honey. Baby, what are you drinking? Uh, so St. Patty's Day's, you know, t- tomorrow. So I pulled out an Irish whiskey. Uh, I got Writer's Tears. Uh, I love Writer's Tears, man. That's a solid one. That is a solid whiskey. So, so uh, that's why you go I've with actually never had this one before. It's a bourbon cask uh, matured. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying this one out. All right. So uh, where are you guys hailing from? Uh, just outside of D.C. in uh, Springfield, Virginia. Perfect. So that's awesome. We're down in South Florida, so we're enjoying probably warmer weather than you guys are right now. <laughs> I wouldn't put your money on that. Virginia is crazy in March. It's about 74 degrees outside today. So that's perfect. That's perfect. We're dealing yeah. with humidity in mid-80s. <laughs> yeah, well, you can keep the humidity, but then we'll be back in the uh, we'll be back in the 50s next week. So we're enjoying the day. Awesome. So what are you guys uh what are you guys doing for St. Patty's Day? You brought up that you're drinking some whiskey for St. Patty's Day. Yes, dear. What are we doing? Uh, yeah, what, what's going we on? Are, we are we have been on a whirlwind uh amount of things that we've been doing between our our jobs and everything else so mm-hmm. this weekend is our wind down and just enjoy it at home weekend um the kids are gone at uh different overnight camping trips and and such so it's just us and we're enjoying it that's what we're doing this weekend heck yeah heck yeah there, there you go hey. you gotta love the uh spring break right yeah <laughs> he that's so it. just that's... lied to you but okay <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that. yeah yeah yeah, I know we're just getting into spring break down here, so <laughs> we're also enjoying the uh, the break from it all. <laughs> yeah. What am I lying about? <laughs> You're lying about. Okay, no. So uh, his way of saying that we're relaxing without the kids means that I have planned the weekend and he hasn't. So, uh, <laughs> so Mike doesn't we, even know what's going on yet. <laughs> right, right. Oh, so we're going, going to a St. <laughs> this is how weird we are. We're going to a St. Patty's Day party um later on today and then for some reason we have uh uh, reservations at a french restaurant downtown on the water tomorrow um so i'm sure we'll figure out where to wear green and drink that is with with tomorrow yeah okay that's relaxing that's still relaxing french is a little bit weird to uh, have as a cuisine on saint patty's day but you know i won't judge yeah well it's the only time we could get reservations in there so i grab it (laughs) that's fair everybody else is out drinking green beer yeah, God. <laughs> yeah, no thanks to the food died beer. I'm I'm good with that. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but no, I'm I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So so I've had a chance to check out um the bar book and I think it's awesome. Uh genuinely it's gonna change a lot of things, I think, for people, especially new new folks who haven't had the the experience popping around and drinking and everything like that um yes yeah. i mean that's that's kind of our hope so so what was kind of the inspiration behind creating uh, well i'd say the inspiration behind it was us trying to solve our own problem which okay. was uh we we knew that we liked different bottles and and i was trying to collect different bottles at a time but i didn't know what flavors mm-hmm. were good or bad i just knew whether i liked something or didn't but also didn't have a fortune to go around and try everything um yep. so i was taking a lot of uh, insights from other people, friends were like, oh, you'll like this one or you'll like that one. That's a good one or this not so on. Sometimes they were right. Sometimes they weren't. Um, I spent a lot of time talking to Dolly because she's the palate, right? She can pick out the flavors and tell you the nuances in, in different uh, either whiskeys or, mm-hmm. or wines because she's she loves wine. And so that's mm-hmm. kind of where her background with this all comes is she can tell you all those nuanced flavors where I can't. Uh, right. I can only just tell you if I like it or I don't. And we were trying to solve this. Well, you know, how do I collect a list or a uh, a group of bottles that I know I'll like and that I'll want to enjoy? Um, she turned me on to something that she had used for wine in the past and said, you know, there's got to be something like this for you know spirits and, mm-hmm. and beers even that you can find. And I looked and I looked and I looked and I found a lot of 
options that were similar. Uh, they they had some of the pieces that we're talking about, but, but they didn't do everything that we're trying to do with the barbell, yeah. right? They just, they, they let you rate, they let you review, they let you see what everybody in this community thought of these products, but nobody ever put it together and said, we're going to show you that and then tell you what you'd like next because we're learning you individually. Um, and that's what I wanted. And, you know, I talked to Dolly quite a bit about this. How do we do this? And, you know, after some long conversations back and forth, we decided to take a leap and build an app, um, which is a it. crazy adventure to do, but it's been fun. But it's fun, right? It's fun. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, so I've noticed that wine wasn't a part of it. So Dolly, you're just going to let him take away with the wine part. Is that? <laughs> yes. And and here's the reason why I, I think the market is saturated with wine apps. Okay. I don't think it would be helpful really um, because there's some really great applications already out there. Um, but as Michael said, there isn't anything for folks to try and learn and experiment and then build upon that. And that's what we wanted to do. Okay. That makes sense. And I know you just uh, recently released the iOS app. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. On uh, March 9th, it came out. Uh, we're still awesome. working through some, some little pieces with that, but that is out on the uh, Apple store. Awesome. Awesome. And as the Android one coming out, as an Android user, I was kind of like, Man. Thank you. Because you know what's so funny about this is that we're both Android yeah. users, right? You would have thought that we would have done that one first, but it just did not work out that way. Um, working with the developers and putting this thing together, uh, iOS came first. Mm -hmm. uh, Android is actually in the works right now. Um, any day now. Uh, yeah, any day now. We're oh, expecting looking forward to, to come it. out on Android. I'm looking forward to it. So, so you know, popping around the site, one of the things that I liked was. Searching through all the whiskeys, I have a pretty extensive collection at this point, right? Having done the podcast for a little over a year. Sure. And I was just like finding all these bottles. I was like, oh, I remember having that one or I remember having that one. And then clicking on the bottle and actually having it show me, um, you know, other ideas of whiskey similar, right? Some of them I'd never heard of before. Some of them I had actually passed on the shelf, like just because, you know, I, I was like, all right, you know. Maybe not today. I like to go to my, you know, the old trustees, right? Yeah. Um, but I also noticed another thing is you have a section for flavor profile and it doesn't, it, it, it looks like it's being built out right now. So what's the vision for that? Yeah. So the, the vision for that is that you are going to start to be able to learn key things about your flavor profile um, and kind of the flavors you lean towards, right? Okay. Um, and then we're going to have the, the, you know, the pieces that match to that. <laughs> hey, we're doing a podcast here. <laughs> <laughs> One of our kids just walked in the door. <laughs> perfect timing. Perfect timing. No, it's great. I'm so, trying to figure out why our child rang the doorbell to our own house, but okay. <laughs> I mean, they, I'm really looking forward to that. I, I am really looking forward to that that part of it. Um, being somebody who I think has at this stage in my my whiskey adventure, right? It's really an adventure because you can always find something that you've never touched before. Sure. I'm really interested to see what it pulls out because I have had so many things from all the way down at the 80 proofs, you know, the Irish whiskey, Scotch whiskey is all the way up to true American bourbons, legacy stuff like Booker's that are up in the 140 range, right? So, yep. and it's, you know, completely different flavor profiles amongst all of them. So <clears throat> I but guess- there's similarities, right? There's, oh, absolutely. There, there's strings that tie those pieces back together. Absolutely. And that's what we're trying to catch on here. Okay, so that's cool. That was actually going to be my, my question, right? Is because, you know, bourbon, everyone always says, when you take a sip of bourbon, it's caramel, right? Caramel is like almost a-, a it's synonymous with, with your bourbons, right? So <clears throat> I'd be interested to see uh, how that all plays out. So do you have like a, have you actually seen it functioning for yourselves? Like now that, cause you do more than just whiskey, right? You do, you yeah, do beers, you do spirits, correct. like all spirits, right? Gin, whis uh, whiskeys, yes. uh, all types of whiskeys, not just American, right? Yeah. Uh, so we, we're doing every type of spirit, uh, liqueurs, rums you know cognac brandy like we, we're doing it all and awesome the 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 piece that you're looking at right now is the 
the link whiskey to whiskey, right? So mm -hmm. you'll see similar whiskeys to similar whiskeys as it learns and as it you know advances through its um, flavor matching software. It's eventually going to get to the point to where it will start telling you if you're looking at whiskeys, hey, here's some beers that kind of match some of the flavors okay. that you like. And that's the piece you're talking about in the flavor profile that's still being built out is that. And right? I'm going to have a huge say in that because um, <laughs> she, you the, got, he talked flavor. about the positives of it, right? Like it's going to, you know, match flavors for you. Woohoo! The opposite part of that is, is that it's also going to help you avoid stuff that you can't stand, right? Okay. So it's going to learn me or learn about me and not learn me. Sorry, my mom's <laughs> rolling her eyes right now. But it's going to learn so much about me to where it's going to know not to recommend a beer to me okay. because I'm not a beer girl. Okay. Right. So it's going to help filter out a lot of what you have little interest or no interest in as well. That's impressive. Okay. Yeah. So, so <clears throat> now you made it seem kind of like if you have a flavor profile you like as far as one spirit goes, it might actually suggest another spirit kind of it, that has similar flavor profiles. And then yeah, so if you just don't uh, like something, then it'll just say, no, nah, I'm not going to suggest it. Right. Okay. Right. right. You'll have the ability to, to, to basically cut that out. But I mean, think about it like this. Uh, bourbons have a lot in common with your Anejo tequilas yep. um, because they're aging process yep. and you know, the, mm -hmm. the wood and things like that. So you're going to get some of those flavor similarities tying between those. For somebody that has just written off tequila and was just like, oh, no, I drank tequila once and I will never do it again. But they became a bourbon drinker later on. This will kind of help show them, look, these are some of the tequilas that have similar, you know, similar flavors or similar profiles to what you're looking at. So it's so cool. That is such a cool like thing. I absolutely. I agree with this because I've always said, like, I mean, tequila is an example. Tequila to me is just Mexican bourbon. <laughs> like, it's like genuinely like because I look at it that way because you get so much similar flavors, especially on aged ones um, yeah. that it just I don't know. It's surprising, I think, to a lot of people when they actually taste like a higher end tequila and they're like, oh, I, I get the flavor profiles that are similar. So I can see why something like that would be very useful, especially for someone like me who just kind of sticks in my lane. Right. I, I like beers, so I'd be interested to see how it falls into that realm. Um, well, I mean, just a very simple example, right? You like bourbon, you like a lot of whiskeys, you like the 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 sharper flavors yeah. and those kind of things. Okay, and maybe it starts to send you barrel aged, you know, beers, right? right? Beers that already are you know similar in their process, drawing similar flavors. Okay, so when do folks? What can folks kind of uh, maybe expect to see something of that? So right now, um, we're like I said, we we're expecting by the into this month, beginning, you know, ish of April, we will have Apple, Android, and doing flavor matching, right? Like that's where we're at. Okay. Um, the phase two is going to start at that point, And that is where we are continuing into more detailed flavor mapping mm -hmm. uh, as we're kind of going through here. And then there's a, a whole nother build in phase two that starts talking about uh, a B2B solution, or I'm sorry, business to business yep. solution that allows... Because one of the things you mentioned earlier is how cool it was to see bottles that you never heard of, right? Yep. And we all know, especially in the bourbon industry, how hard it is to ship spirits or even sell spirits in the, in a state, let alone out mm -hmm. of a state, uh, just because of some of the different you know prohibition legacy laws. This is going to allow those businesses or those distilleries to have an advertising platform. They can now build a page on this site well, in phase two. They build a page on this site and actually build out their products, build out all their menus and and everything short of selling their product in phase two. Wow. That's a that's impressive, actually. That's a very big leap forward for what, what yeah. it is right now. That's amazing. <clears throat> so all of it. So what I tell people is um, I use PlayStation. She loves the Nintendo analogy, okay. but I'll use PlayStation is imagine that we just put out PlayStation 1. It's yep. got its bugs. It is PlayStation 1. It is the first one we just put on the shelf. Everybody's going to wait, you know, three months or whatever until the bugs get worked out, and then they're going to buy their mm -hmm. PlayStation. And mm -hmm. that's kind of where we're at. We're right there. But we've designed PlayStation 5. We just we just, we have to go through we're, one. Through we're three. working through the phases yeah. as you're getting it out there. So I'm it is drawn excited. on a whiteboard. I'm very excited about it. Uh, I think you guys have an amazing, amazing website product that's coming out. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, 
she has been uh she's been my guiding spirit is pushing through this and it definitely the rock i lean on as we do this so um she owns all of that you know cool credit that comes along with this i didn't pay him to say that i promise <laughs> you didn't slide him a 20 under the table no, right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's awesome so obviously as, as a couple it takes a lot to build a business together right um yes. so so what kind of I mean, you told me what inspired you to go towards building this site, but what made you kind of, I don't know, want to start a business together, especially a small business? Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So this is Michael's baby, even though he gives me a lot of credit for it. But if he ever divorces me, I'll take half. <laughs> Um, but, um, this is his baby. He worked really, really hard, um, in the military for over 23 years. Um, and after he retired, he was looking to do something different and something fun and some place to leave his name and mark on. And we thought about our experiences in the military for, you know, all of your listeners that are in the military, everybody knows when you start at the lower ranks, you don't have a lot of money and you go to liquor stores and it's the bottom shelf and the bottom shelf only. Right. Yep. And uh, we have a lot of bad memories um, from those days. And so he's like, hey, let's draw on that experience. Let's draw on what we want and what we think we need. And we took a leap of faith. Um, he's a hard worker. He's dedicated. He's strong. So I was like, hey, um, if you can make it into the highest ranks, you know, enlisted ranks of the military, then I have no doubt that you can build this business as well. Yeah, at that point, it's pretty simple, right? I mean, it's a struggle to move your way up in the military. Yes, it is. But I will tell you, this is a, a whole new learning experience. It's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, the It's taken us about a year to get to this point um, of, of building this and going through this from the very beginnings of, you know, scratching note pages down and, and mm -hmm. writing stuff uh, to I know there was at least a month period of time where Dolly and I went back and forth on the logo. Um, no, we didn't go back and forth. He just wouldn't listen to me. That's what that was. Let's we be did. honest here, right? Yeah. No, yeah. it was. It was. I had so I had a, a a designer that we'd hired that was that was drawing some things out, and they and they were doing things on sketch notes, and we we're trading images back and forth, and I'm sending them to her, and we're doing all these things, and then I just took over and said, "Stop." Yeah. And um, you see our logo. Right. <laughs> it is a nice logo. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was part one of the logo? Like what was uh, rendition one? So the B for the most part was always there, but because okay. it was the bar book, there were different designs with a B in a book. And if you really want honest feedback, you talk to your children. So we showed them that and my daughter or our daughter goes, I thought you were doing something with alcohol. Why are you advertising a library? Right. So because of the book. Right. And so point. then it was, you know, going back to your question about we're not doing wines, but a lot of people with alcohol are familiar with a wine glass. That was a B and a wine glass and all these different things. And I'm like, well, if we're not even going to touch wine, why am I looking at a wine glass? Uh oh seemed perfect because when you look at it is that a rock glass or a highball or is it half of like that can be so many different things to so many people that that's how I, we, we yeah. settled on that logo okay that makes sense i mean it is it's true like the classic uh you know rocks glass so yes <laughs> awesome. yeah i mean that's that's and yeah. then the color scheme was crazy so it's just you know what was that old saying keep it simple stupid like that's yeah. like let's just keep it simple yeah awesome so Speaking of uh, your military, both of you guys, thank you for your service. Obviously, Our pleasure. It's not, it's, it's not an easy thing to want to undertake. Um, so do you have any, like, how did you guys meet up in the military? Was it in the military you guys met up? So funny story. Years ago, I used to work for her. And then I left and went off on another assignment. She retired, got out of the military and I'm off at another assignment doing my thing. And I'm like, you know, maybe I should ask her out. She's retired. She's single. Why not? And so I called her up one day, said, hey, let's go out. And first she thought like, you know, I laughed. She thought like, oh, meet for coffee. Like, yeah, we haven't <laughs> talked to you for a while. Let's let's. Yeah, sure. If you're okay. back in town, whatever. Great. Uh, 
you know, you fast forward and the next thing, you know, we go out on a date and our first date was the, uh, nightmare scenario for a young couple on any couple, like pick your age range. It doesn't matter. It was a nightmare scenario. And I blame my brother for this so much. Um, <laughs> the, the date was a uh, real date. I mean, obviously not just, you know, coming to meet each other, but like a real date was my brother says, Hey man, come back to Indiana for um, my vow renewal. And we're going to do a new year's Eve party and we're going to hang out together. All right. I just have to interrupt because it's going to take too long. All right. <laughs> so here's the deal. Um, it's new year's Eve. He goes, Hey, my brother's having a vow renewal and they're going to do a big party. Do you want to come to Indiana with me? I'm like, sure. Haven't been to Indiana. I'll do anything once I'm adventurous, but I'm not coming to your brother's vow renewal because I barely know you. And I'm not going to meet an entire family full of people. Fast forward. Um, the vow renewal falls apart, not because they were getting a divorce, but it falls apart because they're Catholic and they had booked their vow renewal at the same time as the new year's Eve mass. So they couldn't do it. So they moved it to his brother's house. And the next thing you know, I'm standing in his brother's house with aunts, <laughs> cousins, uncles, mom, stepdad, you name it. The um, exact opposite of what you wanted. Yeah, exactly. Right. She was never supposed to meet anybody. Literally, we I was going to show up, say hi to all the family, and then we were going out to hang out in Indianapolis for the weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah, that did not. Yeah, it did not work out. Did not work out. But, it, you know, it's a I think it's meant to be then. Online. That That's kind of what it was meant to be then. I think that's still the universe yeah. right there. I no, think the universe. Jury, jury, <laughs> jury might still be out on that. Uh, we'll see. Um, no, but yeah, so that that's how it was. And um, fast forward, and we're here together with me with my froggy voice and talking about the bar book. <laughs> see, you don't sound like you're froggy on this side. I'm just saying. Oh, we're here. We're, we're going to have to do this again so you sound what I, you, you can hear what I normally sound like. <laughs> Perfect. I'll do another yes. one. That's fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, that's awesome. I mean, that's a really funny story. I like that a lot. <laughs> it's always we, unique to watch like how people meet up and then like years later, suddenly they reconnect out of nowhere. Yeah. Oh, like no. In the military, she absolutely uh, uh, did not like me whatsoever. So it was a it was a leap to get to get to this point. It took some convincing. I am just I, I, I can see she's still taking the convincing. <laughs> 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 Woo! <Okay>. Every day. <laughs> so back to the bar book. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, we talked about, let's see, we talked about what the future plans are. We talked about the apps coming out. We talked about how you've kind of gotten the idea in place and created the, the business around it. So have you started kind of working with other distilleries to, I don't know, start that phase two, right? Cause I, I know you're talking to like actually working with, with folks to kind of get so them in there. We have definitely talked to to a few about that, you know, that yeah. project and, and that going forward. But, you know, obviously it's a little too soon to start, you know, building it yeah. and getting them on board to do that. But but uh, it's definitely been part of the conversation and they're very receptive, at least the ones we've talked to that into that idea like, oh, that. And we, we work informally with them as well. So one okay. of the ways we've been able to build up the product side of the app so fast is that Michael is a great entrepreneur and has reached out to distilleries and breweries mm -hmm. and explained the bar book. And it's amazing the reception we have received because it's basically free advertising for them, right? right yeah. So they love the bar book just as much as we do, we do. And so they will say, yeah, you know, put our, our products online. And a lot of them will send us their products so that we can do tastings here mm -hmm. to um, verify what they say um, their products should, should taste like. Yeah. And when I say tastings, I don't mean, you know, Oh, we, we went to the whatever tasting and this one, a gold and this one is silver. This is seriously for everybody. So we okay. will get an eclectic mix of people from our, um, neighborhood and our friends and family and say, come over on Friday and we will do a tasting of bourbons or whiskeys or tequilas. We haven't done the vodkas yet. And with the products that people have sent us, we have them rate them on the app as they're tasting them. Oh, that's awesome. And it's, and it's amazing how they are learning their flavor profiles. Um, and it's amazing just listening to the crosstalk. So mm -hmm. the crosstalk that we have at our table is the crosstalk that we want on the app. 
Yeah. Absolutely. So is there going to be like an option to like kind of friend people on there who might, you might want to like in your community of bourbon? Yes. Or, you so know, there is whatever? a, uh, so there's a, a newsfeed piece that's, okay. that's on there and there will be the, you know, friend people, follow people, track, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, you know, as part of the, the future build out piece comes is the, you know, if you, you know, from your podcast, start, you know, posting and sharing ones that you like with your reviews and stuff, people can follow you and each one of your posting and reviews can link to the actual product. Oh, so that's that, awesome. So that it's, you know, I'm not searching through a hundred pages of your postings to try to figure out when you talked about that one bourbon mm -hmm. that I remember. Instead, I'll just go to that bourbon and see everybody that's talked about it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a great way to handle it. And what's so funny is, is that even though we're married, our palates are so different. I would never follow him. So <laughs> 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 it's very true our our drinks differ uh quite a lot and it's cool that way because you know i end up trying something new anytime we go somewhere because she'll pull something out or you know vice versa and you know some of those bottles you mentioned earlier the higher proofs and things like that i love those yeah she, i don't yeah she won't touch them but, well i mean that is an acquired taste it definitely is one of those things you kind of work your way up to you don't just start there <laughs> you have to like Start at your hundreds and kind of step your way up. Otherwise, it's just kind of a shock to the system going that. Oh, high. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think someone called it the other day, the Kentucky hug. And I was like, yeah. I, I, that's, I, I think that's appropriate. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like that hug. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, nice handshake will do. So She prefers the Jalisco, Mexico hug. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Follow me for tequilas. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There you go. Shout out to Dolly for the tequilas. <laughs> Mike for the bourbons. <laughs> So, so you did mention, um, getting a bunch of samples and stuff. So what has been some of your favorite samplings that you've received so far? Cause it's kind of cool that you're receiving them and it sounds like it's just anything that you can kind of get, or it's hard, maybe a little bit hard, hard to find or. In the beginning, in the beginning, they're, they're hard to, you know, find a little bit. And some of them are hard for us to find just because we're in Virginia and, and mm -hmm. markets and, and things like that. But, uh, I mean, we've got. Uh, quite a bit that we try and sample and um i don't know which one has been our favorite or most unique um we've had you know quite a few mm -hmm. that uh, that we've really loved hi i'm michael and i'm an alcoholic pick one <laughs> i mean i don't know i you know i'll i'll give you i'll give you a couple that uh, that i thought were kind of cool um one i went and rebought another bottle of it uh four branches bourbon i don't okay. know if anybody's talked about that one before that one's a great one. Um, met the guys. They they gave us a bottle, a sample, did a tasting with it here. Got great reviews from everybody that tried that bottle. Um, we really liked it. And then another one I picked up uh, just because it's a friend's distillery that I know down in North Carolina is uh, Beehawk Distillery um, okay. out in Southern Pines. They literally just opened the doors uh, earlier this month. And okay. I went down there and snagged a bottle from them. And uh, that's a Two totally different bourbons, uh, both veteran-owned brands, and they're both fantastic in their own rights. So awesome. Um, yeah, those are some of my favorites in the bourbon world. What about Netherworlds? <laughs> uh tequila. That would be Severo. Severo's, Severo. yeah, our favorite tequila. Which you can't find in Virginia. So I was very happy um when they sent that um bottle for us. Uh you like that one out of Chicago too, that one that was in the white bottle, the um in Spiro. Was that the one? Well you bought that. Well they didn't send that one, but we yeah in Spiro, in Spiro is um if I remember the background story, uh female owned, which is awesome. Um and then it was um the whole concept was not to use additives um and extra anything in the tequila and it was actually quite tasty. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure. Yes. yes. I'm sure. <clears throat> so uh, it also touches on beer. So as far as craft beers go, I know we're not, we're not a beer podcast by any means, but it's always something that craft beers will always hold a special place in my heart. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was kind of like the first, you know, glimpse into drinking for me was craft beers. Sure. Um, so how do you, cause there's so many of them out there. How do you even sort through that? There's just, they're, they pop up all the time and, you know. They do. Um, you know, craft breweries, they, you're right. They they pop up and it's kind of like whack-a-mole finding all these different things as they yeah. come up across the country. They're great. Um, I start started with the ones we knew. Um, so when we were starting to build our database of, of products, mm -hmm. start with the ones we know first. Uh, start with the ones we've had, the ones we like. 
And then from there, uh, the next group I went after was, you know, we're both military veterans. So I went after all the military ones. I, you know, did a Google search and sure enough, there's a list of everything if mm -hmm. you want. And then started looking at each of their sites and going to each one of those for military owned brands and trying to build those in. Okay. And then, then I went local and started looking at Virginia. So as we continue to add more and more and talk to more and more brands, of course we branch out, but you will see that a large uh, group that's in there right now are, you know, East coast. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Being that you're on the East Coast, right? <laughs> so, is there ever going to be like a feature where uh, someone who joins the app, maybe they did get that whiskey or that beer or something like that that you guys don't have on your site yet, just because of the amount of sure. differences out there? Would they be able to submit maybe a picture of it and then some information on it, or, or have it be absorbed into your website for other people to maybe discover it? So, yes, um, I mean, that can happen now. So if you go on there and you're, you know, there's a contact us button on there or a link on there. Um, if you find one, you're like, hey, I haven't seen, you know, Booker's, for example, right? And I want this this new bottle that they just released, this new um, of Booker's, and I, I want it on there. Okay, shoot us an email and we'll go and try to add it to the, to the database as soon as we can. Um, it may take us 24 hours or so to put it on there, but yeah. We're definitely uh, responsive a, and receptive to that. Such a you long know. time to wait, 24 hours. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I expect but, it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, maybe in the future, there's a way to have people build their own back into it. But mm -hmm. the the piece we got to control, at least in the beginning, is the the flavors, right? We mm -hmm. have to get the flavors right and get the the data correct because it, it doesn't do you any good if I just have Absolutely. spaces. Which actually leads me into my next question, right? So how did you build up? Like, I know if you go to some websites, they they market very well on the flavor profiles, but I've drank enough whiskeys where I try to find any information. And it's just like, eh, there's nothing out there. Yeah, they exist. That's pretty much all you get. So how do you, how do you even come across that information? It's just like, you ask the distillery, like what's the expected or a, a combination of both. Right. So okay. a lot of it is, is web searching and, and looking and, and going into them. And then there is a, a distillery follow-up or a brewery follow-up. And then there's, if I can't find it at all, but somebody's recommended a brand there, it may just start with a cold call or email to the distillery or brewery. Um, and I've done all, uh, typically when a brand gets added, uh, okay, let's use, let's use, uh, bookers right okay bookers gets added we build all of their products out from jim beam and then i'll shoot an email to their you know to their products manager sales department and say hey we just added all your products on here here's what you say the flavors are i want to make mm -hmm. sure we captured you the way you wanted it captured some will come back and be like no it looks great others won't respond and then others will come back and be like okay you said this word i wanted to say this word i'd prefer this picture over that picture and you know we'll change whatever they want um, it's, it's totally their representation. We just want to make sure we do it accurately. Yeah, that's, and that's, I think the most important part, right? If you're going to build a site, that's going to be suggesting, especially flavors and things like that. You're definitely going to want that representation there. That must take it's, so much effort though. Oh, it does. So <laughs> it, it, it does take, take so much time and effort. <laughs> it does. It takes a lot of time and effort. And then Dolly mentioned the, the tastings that we do. That's how we fact check it. Okay. Right. So random tastings that we do over here with these groups of people, we have a group of anywhere between 10 and, you know, 12 people or so that'll be over here at the house and we'll let them try it. And then they get to write down on their little cards what they thought, you know, everything tasted like, and then we'll tell them what the manufacturer says. And I'll go back on the back side of that and say, if, you know, nine out of 10 said that it had this one other note, then I'll, I'll go and add that. Or, okay. You know, if none of, you know, I don't take anything away from what the, the distiller or mm -hmm. brewer says, but if everybody is tasting another note, I might add that to it just because that seems yeah. to be a consensus. I mean, that's a smart way to do it, especially since it's a, a lot of people I'm assuming that are going to start using this aren't like as, as, as accurate on palate as you, Dolly, right? So they're going to be a little bit more. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming, right? Mike, Mike gave the compliment, right? <laughs> no, it's, it's so it's, right. it's it's one of those things, right? It, it, like for me, it might taste completely different than someone who has a very, very accurate palate. I, I can see flavor profiles all day. And sometimes I grab the right things. Sometimes I don't, right? Sure. Um, so that's really important to kind of have that flexibility to bring in what the people are actually getting. 
I mean, that's that's the goal is to make make it fit you. And it's not going to be 100 percent. Right. Because your your taste buds and your your palate and what you like can change yeah. and it can change, you know, by day. I mean, there by season, it changes by day it changes. I mean, there are certain times a year you want a light beer on, on a beach and other times you want a heavy stout sitting in your living room. Yeah. So it is going to shift a little bit, but we're going to try to be consistent with what you like. Um, okay. The best way, uh, best analogy that I can give for this is think of your music sharing apps, mm -hmm. right? You know, you may be in the mood for country music and we'll start sharing the country music songs that hit right along with what you like. And then one day you start going to R and B it's going to take a minute, but you're, it'll start mirroring songs yeah. to fit that, you know, that trend. And then maybe at the end of the year, uh, like one of the ones we use, it'll come back and it'll say, here's everything you kind of liked this year. Um, those are things we can look at in the future as we build this out. And that's that's a good way to to handle it, right? Um, and also, I mean, just seasons on on bourbon specifically, or whiskeys in general, right? Uh, if you have a longer cold season, it can impact the maturation of them, right? So that what you nor no, normally know is a consistent product suddenly changes, and it's not you know the same flavor profile anymore for a certain oh, absolutely. batch. Yeah. <clears throat> so I like that. That's I really. I'm really excited to see where you guys take this. Like genuinely, like we, I think the world has needed something like this for a very well, we, long time. Yeah, we appreciate that. That's <laughs> awesome. I mean, that feedback really helps. It does. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I'm looking forward to it. Um, but that said, uh, you know, I think we're going to wrap up. Um, I've had a lot of fun with you guys. I, I've learned so much about you guys and the app and I'm really looking forward to seeing phase two and, the rest of your guys' journey with this. And if you guys ever want to hop back on, absolutely just let me know. I would yeah, love to yeah. keep Please, talking thanks. with you guys as you as you grow <laughs> this this app. <laughs> uh that would be awesome. And I'd love to come back anytime and uh you know talk some more and tell you where we're going and where we've been and you know all the things. So awesome. I'm looking thanks forward for to having it. us. Well thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Have a good one. All right. Bye. Have you a safe day. Bye. Happy Free Patty say thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the interview with The Bar Book. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. Make sure you go over to thebarbook.co or check out their iOS app that's out right now. Soon to be an Android app that's coming out. Uh, and definitely check out their socials. Uh, you'll be able to check. Uh, I'll have them linked down below in the description. As well, make sure you go and... Check us out over on Instagram and YouTube and TikTok. We're always posting stuff. Uh, we post every other Wednesday at 4 p.m. Uh, make sure you head over to YouTube and subscribe. Also, check out Fox Cigar at foxcigar.com. They have free shipping on orders over $25. Great selection of cigar kits, uh, all of your accessories, uh, cutters, lighters, ashtrays, all that stuff. Um, what I said... Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening.